welcome back to my channel. My name is Michaela and I'm going to be doing a 24 hour Casey McQuiston reading vlog. I recently did an Emily Henry vlog where I read three Emily Henry books in the space of like 12 hours. I gave myself 24 so I'm hoping to do the same thing here but definitely giving myself the grace period of the 24 hours. So the three books that I have chosen to read today. It's the newest release, I Kissed Shara Wheeler. This is a story of Chloe. She goes to a Catholic school with Shara Wheeler, who is like the picture perfect prom queen, sort of, I think, principal's daughter even, I want to say. She kisses our main character, Chloe, and then just disappears. Like she just does this like gone girl move. And, but she's also kissed a few other people. One of my really good friends, Jem, she has a bookstagram as well as a YouTube. I'll link her down below. I didn't really say anything so I can form my own opinion on it, but I'm really, really excited to get to this one and share my thoughts with you guys as well. We've got Red, White and Royal Blue. Alex is the son of the US president and I'm pretty sure he has a bit of a fling with a young prince from England. I want to say it's something to do with a political thing like they're obviously teenagers but their parents are both politicians so that's how they kind of meet each other i have heard some really really cute things about this I recently hauled this one it is one last stop and it is about a girl who lives in new york she catches the subway and she kind of is a bit intrigued by this girl that she sees but then realizes that she has been displaced from time she's maybe from like the 1970s so it's almost got that sort of magical realism element as well as being a love story. So these are our three books. Look, I think I'm just going to do it in order that I pulled them out. Let's not waste any more time with any idle chit chat, guys. Let's start reading this book and I'll come back when I'm about halfway through and share my thoughts with you. Okay, just bring it back real quick. I'm actually really excited to have three physical books to read because then I get to use my romantically inclined bookmarks. They're so good. I'm going to link Kate's Etsy down below as well. I'm just like... Now I can never go back. I can never go back to using receipts as bookmarks. I have to have this one about a raunchy book with a naked woman and a dragon shifter who uses his tail for exciting reasons. Okay, back to the TikTok cutaway, boo. Okay, so we had a brief intermission and my husband and I went out for dinner. Book so far, I'm definitely getting the vibes of Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Madsen. She's very, very gifted. Shara Wheeler is essentially her academic rival. She's done like a gone girl. She kissed her two days before prom. Then she's kissed the weird boy next door from her at prom. And then her boyfriend, Smith, who is like a football jock. So the three of them are sort of working together. At the end of chapters, we sort of have like little things like, you know, either emails or... Uh, drafts of notes, things like that. Shara's dad is the principal. So we, our main character, is kind of trying to dig and see what's going on. She thinks that something is up, but her dad maintains that she has gone to visit family. I don't really know how I'm feeling about it now. I'm just, like I said, I'm getting all of the Morgan Matson since you've been gone vibes, kind of like Paper Towns by John Green. But I do think that it's meta in the way that it's sort of mentioned. It's like, oh, like she's just turned her life into a John Green novel. And it's like, well, that's exactly what it is. And I don't know, I think that these sorts of books especially are good for people who haven't read those books, who are kind of in the younger crowd, kind of don't really have thoughts on it at the moment, even though I'm like a third of the way through it. I know that sounds terrible. All right, I'll check back in with you guys when I finished it. Well, okay, is that how I look? All right, <clears throat> right. Well, good morning. It is the next day. I think that it's quarter to nine. I finished. I kissed Shara Wheel. I was about to say I kissed Casey McQuiston, but I didn't. We are coming at you barefaced. Are we crooked? I think we're crooked. Sorry, guys. Um, and then I started Red, White and Royal Blue. I'm 12 pages into this. I'm listening to the audiobook while I do things around the house. Um, we'll talk about that when we get further along, halfway. You know the drill. We're doing pretty good for time, guys. I has a really good group of core friends. But then when this mystery with Shara Wheeler happens, she just completely abandons and ignores them. And then there's other friends that she makes along the way. And it is what it is. But for me personally, like... She didn't have any serious repercussions for the things that she did and the relationships that she sort of burnt along the way. I'm just trying to unravel this mystery girl. Her motivations behind everything. A bit of a cop out. Like it was fine. And I'm excited to get into the next book and just like leave that one behind. I don't think that this one's going to survive another unhaul. Cute cover though. Like really pretty. Like love the vibe of that. But uh, I don't think I'll be doing a reread anytime soon. So... Let's get on with this one. I'll see you when I'm about halfway through. It is cute so far. Like I said, we're only 12 pages in. Um, we've got Alex. He is the son of the President of the United States and his sister, Nora, is kind of like popping up in it. They've got this like really funny sort of sibling dynamic and they're on their way to a royal wedding in the UK and there's already been some 
funny comments about like me and things like that. So I'm excited. So then we're gonna meet Henry. Of course, his name's Henry because he's British. It's like violently British, right? See you in a minute. Okay, we're 60% of the way through red, white, and royal blue. Oh my gosh, my mouth like stumbles over that. I am really liking this one. I'm enjoying this way, way more than Shara Wheeler. So now that I've like gotten into the book, <laughs> these birds. Now that we're into the book more, chica every time. Alex is the son of the United States president. She is a female president. Um, the first one in this world. Um, Alex himself is half Mexican and his mum is white. Uh, so, Everything kind of like works against them in that respect. She's a Democrat, really progressive, obviously a woman, remarried. His father's also a senator. His sister's June. Nora is the granddaughter of the vice president. So they're like the White House three or something. Like it's something like that. They kind of had this hashtag. So Alex is going to the royal wedding in England where Henry's older brother is getting married and that was where the joke about imperialism and colonization and things like that happened he has kind of he's just like hated henry forever like he saw a picture of him when he was like 11 years old and like was kind of like hmm um kind of not understanding his sexuality and things like that and it's actually through this book that alex discovers that he himself is not straight but like during the course of this book he really examines some things from when he's growing up some feelings that he's had for people but he's always kind of had this infatuation with henry when he was 11 and then he met him and he fucking hated him. He was like, Henry was a little asshole to him. He was like, fuck you, Henry, from that moment on. So at this wedding, Alex gets tanked. He gets tanked a lot, actually. Like, I am surprised that I've gotten 60% of the way through um, and Alex is drinking. Like, he just talks about how he just drinks himself into oblivion or just, you know. Anyway, <laughs> let's not psychoanalyze this book. But that's exactly what I'm here to do, actually. Drunk as fuck has decided to go and confront Henry about kind of like hating him or something. And then he falls on top of Henry and they knock over the $75,000 wedding cake. So as part of a public relations kind of smooth over, they send Alex to the UK. They try to say that they've been friends for ages. Goes to the UK for like a weekend or something like that and kind of gets to see like a different sort of side of Henry and they also exchange numbers and then yeah they kind of just start like a text relationship and they sort of like you know back and forth sharing little anecdotes of their day. It's just a cute little story of them sort of weaving in and out of their lives and things like that while there's the political backdrop sort of playing in the back. It's not like it's just a setting because Alex himself would really like to get into politics. Like that's what his college major was on. He does graduate college during the course of the book. And then Henry, obviously, who has just been born into duty and kind of being, you know, the spare heir and sort of like the traditions of what his family expectation is in his lineage. So yeah, we are at 60%. So things are kind of happening that sort of happen at this point in stories. I'm excited to see how this one goes. I definitely have a much better feeling like Shara Wheeler during the course of that book. I was a bit kind of like, Ugh, a couple of things were happening, but I mean, this one we're doing much better. We're also doing amazingly for time. I'm going to go straight into one last stop as soon as I finish this one. So I'll do like a little wrap up sort of thing like I do with my Emily Henry vlog, vlog when I talk about all of the books and which ones I like the best. It's a very manic Gemini season is just pure chaos honestly like communication it has just broken the fuck down honestly but i'm trying i'm really out of here trying guys i promise okay see you when i am looking at you next okay so we're back we're back and we finished our casey mcquiston reading vlog i don't think that i checked in at all i'm pretty sure i didn't about one last stop um i think that i really enjoyed this one probably the second most. <laughs> I love how I'm like, there's three books and I'm like, I've just got to pick favorites. What can I say? I'm a Scorpio. I Shara Wheeler how this wasn't really my bag. I'm actually going to be giving this one to my friend's daughter. I think I'm actually going to give all of these away. I know that sounds a little bit controversial, but I do have reasons behind that. Liked one last stop, the next. We'll talk about this one in a second. And then Red, White and Royal Blue. There was definitely a reason why this was a winner of a Goodreads Choice Awards. I can tell you that. So in one last stop, our main character is August. August is 23. She has just moved from New York. She's a little bit of like a bohemian sort of lifestyle. She kind of drifts through life a little bit. She's originally from Louisiana, where her mother still is. Um, what's not really spoken about in the synopsis of this book, nor on anyone else that I've kind of like seen giving a kind of brief rundown of this. August's uncle, her mother's brother, disappeared like 
40 odd years ago or something like that. So it's really shaped the way that August has sort of been. So when we open up with the book, August has just moved to New York. She doesn't even have a mattress. She has an air mattress. She has like six boxes of belongings. And then there's kind of this line where she's like, maybe I could condense my belongings down to five. There's not a lot of permanence in her life. And that's sort of, she doesn't really make connections. She's kind of bounced around from college to college. She's been in a couple of different places. So she figured coming to New York, she could sort of like disappear in her own way without like disappearing. Does that make sense? You know, she sort of could just kind of blend into the background and become part of the city. So when she moves into this share apartment with these truly eccentric cast of characters, uh, they immediately embrace her as a friend and she gets a job working at this little diner. Even though she has no waitressing experience, her friend, her roommate and friend Myla um, is like, oh yeah, she's a great waitress. She's amazing. You know, like give her a job and she gets a job and she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. And on her commute to and from work on the Q train, she sees this gorgeous girl, Jane. So Jane is, Jane has these red converse. You can see she's got her red chucks on. She is sort of uh, like a bit butch presenting. August immediately just has a massive crush on Jane. August as well is someone who, she just doesn't make connections with people. So when she asks Jane out and Jane's just like, kind of a bit like weird about it. She just sort of like, oh, like, I don't think that's something that I can do. August is like, well, shit, you know, like she's kind of really gone out on a limb here. And because of the way that her mother's raised her, basically investigating things about her uncle's disappearance and kind of, you know, trying to track leads and things like that, she's become almost like a Veronica Mars type kid um, in the way that she can kind of clock personality traits about people. This is at work one day, she sees the opening of the diner that she works at and there is a picture of Jane and the diner opened in like 1971 or something like that. So immediately she's just like, what the fuck? So one of her roommates is a psychic medium. He's really funny. Like it opens the book talking about that sort of stuff. And August, because of the way that her mother was raised, she just thinks that they're all liars and stuff like that. So she's like, okay, well, what's the worst that can happen? She takes her friend onto the train with her. And he's just like, well, she's not dead. Like she just seems to be kind of stuck. She doesn't really have any awareness of that. She doesn't realize that she's sort of been displaced like 40 odd years in time. This one's really interesting. And having read the first two first, I think that I enjoyed this one even more because Casey McQuiston, she really did nail this. There were some really exciting elements in it. And I think that definitely Shara Wheeler is like her YA sort of foray into things. Whereas this is definitely more adult. There are some real things about a mother-daughter relationship and sort of the way we treat people and our expectations of others and the delay of grief and not giving up on things, but also the magical realism element of like, what the fuck is going on with Jane? Like, why is she stuck on this train? How is it August who is kind of, you know, making things more real for her, pulling her life out. Definitely recommend this to a more adult reader. I think that it's a really impactful sort of book, especially if it's something that you can sort of relate to in terms of the things that I've spoken about. So honestly, I think that like the scale of things is like, it was like a downward spiral. Like this was the first release from Casey McQuiston, and then this is the second, and then this is the third. And Shara Wheeler just personally wasn't for me. She was just too much of like an Alison de Laurentiis wannabe without having any real motivations behind the things that she was doing. And then like by the end of it, you're sort of just like, what the fuck bitch? Like you could have done this so much, but I mean, I wrote in my reading journal, I'm not gonna do any spoilers in this one, obviously guys. Um, but if you have read the book, please talk to me about it down below because I just, it was kind of lacking in a few things for me. But I will say that with all of these books, you can definitely tell that Casey McQuiston speaks from personal experience. Their writing is, quite profound and it definitely makes you think things. There are some moments in I Kiss Shara Wheeler would have been far more synthetic had the main character not done so many selfish things, but there were really poignant moments throughout with the relationships and self-actualization and realization and those kind of hard to have conversations. Especially in Red, White and Royal Blue, this is really about being true to yourself and the inner workings almost of like politics but then the people behind the politicians because that's the thing you know it's referenced so many times in this like Sasha and Malia Obama about how they were torn apart by the press and it's like they, they were fucking children while everyone in this is over the age of 18 it's definitely interesting to think about this is the life that your parents signed up for and you're along for the ride and it was really great to see Alex's mum kind of stepping out of the role of being like the president and being his mother and being supportive and being there for him as well as Henry facing up to his family, saying, this is who I am. This is 
how I want to live my life and be authentic. So I definitely love this one. I gave this one five stars. Um, I'm not really a big grader on Goodreads unless I really, really like something or I really, really dislike something. But I definitely think that this is my favorite. I am going to get rid of all of these. I'm going to give them to my friend's daughter. I've talked about her a few times before. I just know that she's going to like them for far more than I do. And are available on Libby. So I actually listened to the audiobook of both of these despite having the physical copies because I was doing things around the house. Sunday is my productive day of the week, guys. That they're going to find a better home with her. And I mean, I see my friend all the time. So if I really want to borrow them and reread them, I can just borrow them back or buy them again. Because <laughs> why not? I hope that you enjoyed this vlog, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these ones. I definitely know that Red, White and Royal Blue is a pretty popular book. So I want to hear some of your thoughts. If you are new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Lots of love, hugs, and kisses. Mwah. Bye.